SNES Drunk. Hi there, I've been putting it off long enough, so let's take a look at some of the best games that were only released in the European region, or in other words, the best PAL games that never made it to North America for whatever reason, for Super Nintendo. I'm going to do this the same way the Japan-only Super Famicom videos are done, so just a brief blurb on each game, and show off some footage for about 20 to 25 games. I'll start real quick with the games people are already mostly familiar with, like Terranigma. I already did a video on this one, it's the third game in the Enix Quintet trilogy, and the best of the three in my opinion, just edging out Soul Blazer. Terranigma is a bit more story driven, that's what you'll remember about this game first and foremost when you think back on playing it. But yeah, there's the familiar top down combat with the occasional puzzle here and there, some really nice visuals, and a superb soundtrack. Terranigma might be the best game on this entire video. Speaking of top-down games, there's the Firemen. This is a game that sounds kind of dumb on the surface. You walk around and put out fires with an arsenal of typical firefighting stuff, but for what it is, this game is really well done. There's a certain element of strategy to taking out fires and making sure they don't spread, and your character is given a lot of functionality here to deal with all the mayhem. The Firemen is just a well-made game that's something different from your usual action fare. Next there's Cannon Fodder. This is another game with a strategic slant as you survey high above the action here as your lemming-like army takes out bad guys. You're granted more and more functionality as you progress. This game seems like it shouldn't work as well as it does because everything is so small, but the hit detection here is very forgiving and it's pretty funny to blast these guys into oblivion. Staying with top-down games, there's Super Bomberman 3. Now, there are five total Super Bomberman games. The first two made it to the US, the third made it to Europe, but the fourth and fifth never left Japan. However, Super Bomberman 3 is my pick for the best in the series, because it features the most items to use, a ton of playable characters, these kangaroo guys named Louis, as a soccer mini-game, and there's the bad bomber mode, where eliminated players can hang out on the edge of the map and still screw up the game for everyone. It's so fun. Now we move on to more traditional platformers with one of my personal favorites, Poppin' Twinbee Rainbow Bell Adventures. This game is early 90s Konami platforming at its very best, with wide open level design, smooth intuitive controls, and all sorts of nice little touches here and there that add a lot of personality. If Terra Enigma isn't the best game on this list, then Rainbow Bell Adventure would be my next pick. Another nice and polished looking platformer is Asterix and Obelix. I'm not sure how that's pronounced, but that's what I'm going with. This is a game that has a visual presentation similar to Earthworm Jim, fittingly enough as it's based off a serialized comic that was popular in France. A game that puts such a heavy emphasis on art style is always going to be a bit clunky to control at first because you have to get used to how the characters move and react, and that can take a while. Both these guys move pretty deliberately, which can be frustrating, but this is definitely a fun platformer with quite a bit of variety in the gameplay. Next is Whirlow, a pretty standard side-scrolling platformer that's good enough. You're this little green dude that swings around a pitchfork and gets it stuck in the ground occasionally. One hit deaths here, so it's pretty dang hard. Nothing spectacular here, but a decent enough game that can kill 30 minutes for you. Lucky Luke is a great looking run and gun game with a western setting which draws the obvious comparison to Sunset Riders. That's a better game, but Lucky Luke is still pretty good. You can't shoot while jumping, which is kind of lousy, but there's hidden areas to find and a good amount of gameplay variety as well. Now let's move on to fighting games, and I only have to mention one franchise, Dragon Ball Z. There are seriously like 6 or 7 Dragon Ball Z one-on-one -on -one fighting games, and they're all very similar. I'm not familiar with the series, so I'm not the best person to tell you which is the best game or which best captures the spirit of the show or whatever. I can tell you that I had the most fun with Dragon Ball Z Hyper Dimension, just because the stage settings were pretty cool. These games don't come close to games like Street Fighter 2 or Killer Instinct, but they're alright. Next I'll tackle some shoot 'em ups The first Parodius game was released in Europe, but not North America. And that's really a shame, because this is one of the weirdest, most surreal games you'll ever play. Really, even if you don't like shoot 'em ups or if you just suck at them, I implore you to try Parodius. It's ridiculous in the best possible way. It's just one thing after another making you say, wait, what? It's hilarious and there isn't another game like it of its era. If you'd rather play a vertically scrolling shooter, there's Poppin' Twin B. Pretty weird in its own right, but a well-made game. My only qualm with it is that it's so bright and colorful that it's often tough to see enemies or projectiles, so you gotta stay on your toes. You can control the power-up system to a certain extent by shooting these bells that pop up to make them a certain color to match what you need, whether it's a better weapon or points to build toward an extra life. Super Drop Zone is a Defender-style shooter, the sequel to the original Atari game that was, uh, pretty much a total ripoff of Defender. So if you like this style of shooter, I'm just letting you know that this is out there. 
Cyvalian is a decent arcade port where you control a metal fire-breathing dragon. It has some problems, like the strange out-of-place music and the unreadable text, but it's a pretty interesting game that provides multiple endings depending on how you play, and the maps are randomized throughout. It's definitely flawed, but it's worth checking out. On to puzzle games, there's The Humans, a really bad title, but an okay game. You play as a group of cavemen that you arrange to work together to get through each stage. You control one guy at a time switching with the L and R buttons, you find tools and weapons, kill dinosaurs, and earn abilities as you progress. There's also Worms, a PC port, and yeah, Super Nintendo PC ports can be dicey, but this game is fine. You control a group of worms that battles their way across the screen. In other words, it's the same worm-style gameplay you're likely familiar with from the 2007 remake, just on Super Nintendo. It's pretty limited, but it's still a fun multiplayer game. Eberekis Popoido is an interesting name for a game to say the least. It's your typical Tetris Dr. Mario hybrid style game. This one in particular is similar to Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, only you can line up pieces diagonally. It's an inoffensive puzzle game if you like stuff like this, and again, it's a good multiplayer game. Last, let's tackle a few sports games, starting with racing. Micro Machines 2 is one of the best games on this list. It's a very good top-down racing game with reliable and consistent controls. The track is a bit slippery, and it's easy to knock each other off the track entirely, but you get used to it pretty quickly. It's a good game that's a nice change of pace from stuff like Mario Kart and Top Gear. Smash Tennis is another really good title because it supports up to four players. Okay, not everyone is that crazy about tennis, but still, behind Super Tennis, it's the best tennis game on the Super Nintendo. And to finish up, here's three games for sports I know almost nothing about, soccer, rugby, and cricket. I'm obviously not the best judge for games that best represent these sports because I just don't follow them. Hell, I barely understand the rules of rugby and I don't have the slightest idea what's supposed to be happening in cricket. But that said, Sensible Soccer European Champions is one I hear recommended a lot and I can see why. It's a fast-paced game that's easy to get into. And just as a quick aside, the crowd noise here is some of the best I've ever heard in a game. For rugby, there's world-class rugby, and for cricket, there's super international cricket. Those are two I hear recommended all the time. So yeah, there you go. If I had to pick the four best games from this list, I'd go with Terranigma, Poppin' Twin Bee Rainbow Bell Adventures, The Fireman, and Parodius, with an honorable mention to Micro Machines 2. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.